That afternoon, I'm on my BMX bike. I'm heading to my weekly Boy Scout meeting. I'm riding the same route as always through that small suburban village where I grew up. I'm eight years at the time. There was an old mill in our village, and I passed that every week. Not an old one, but one of those kind of maybe 50 years old, double-stored industrial mills, yellow-painted, all boarded up with the windows. The mill had been abandoned for about 10 years. I was never told that the mill was a no-go territory, uh, but I was always curious about that place. And one night, that specific af afternoon, I roamed round back and I realized that somebody had smashed a window on the back. So I parked my bike, I got up on the crossbar, and I looked in. It was pitch dark inside. I climbed further, really careful of not damaging myself or my Boy Scout uniform on the scattered glass that lay around. And then I got inside. And the only thing illuminating the room was the light coming from my back. I was mesmerized. Everything was still there. An office. There was a table, chairs, there was a punch clock. I had no idea what that was at the point, at that time. Some old sacks. I looked around and I opened the door and I saw a factory line. And I looked back and I saw this table with a cup with, a cup with traces of coffee and a thermo. It was like somebody just left the place without looking back. And everything was covered with dust and spiderweb. All the sounds disappeared, and I was there all alone in this new world. I was Indiana Jones, and I found my own treasure. Five minutes later, I got on my back, by, back on my bike, and I went on the street, and I went to my weekly Boy Scout meeting, and everything continued. But for some reason, those few minutes stuck with me. Maybe I should have left it at that, but I didn't. Because as I was growing older and growing up, I never missed a chance to go in and seek out these places, and find these places where people leave the traces of the life that was once living inside. I assume most of you, at some point in life, have passed a mill, or a house, or an abandoned factory. And I think what differs us today is that I spend all, <laughs> all the effort I can to get inside. And take this house, for instance, because 10 years ago, I decided, together with one of my old friends, because we were sharing these experiences, and we talked about them, and we decided to bring our cameras, because we knew that all the places that we had gone through to through our life was now vanished. But what, what would it be like on the inside? What is it like? A house? with everything is still there. The platters on the wall, the old TV set, the furnitures, the cozy corner, and you can walk around and nobody's there. People have gone. The places have been left abandoned. Only for me to come and experience these places. So you walk around this place and take it in, read the signs, see the icons, understand what was this like? Who lived there? Because everything inside these places had a meaning and it was placed for a purpose. The cozy corner on the other side, you can basically see in the cushioning that where people sat. Just like they got up and walked out, except for the fact that this was there for more than 15 years. 
go to the kitchen, you go upstairs, you see the beds, you walk out in the yard, and you walk, and there's a tiny garage, opening the door, finding another treasure that just sits there and waits to be discovered. When we started this journey, we became obsessed with the questions. The questions of why. Why doesn't anybody care? Why is it all just left behind? Where are the owners? Why haven't anybody done anything? What about all the valuables? And very often, it was actually the lack of answers that kept us coming back, coming back for more, because we were puzzled. We didn't realize the existence of, this, of these places. And sometimes there's a really, really strange feeling once you're inside an abandoned place, because you can get really close to the people, even though there are no people. And I'm going to tell you, we don't want to meet people. <laughs> Not in these places. But once you're inside, you kind of slowly figure out what kind of life was living, who were the people. You slowly gather their personality, and weirdly enough, even in a place like this with wildcats and piss all over and mold, you can still scent people. Opening the closet, and the beautiful dresses still hang there in order. And talking about getting close to the places and to the people, sometimes you can get really close. So we became obsessed with this. Why were all these places there? And we, they kept showing up. And at a point, we decided maybe we should go beyond the borders of Denmark and see if we could look things. So, and actually on one of our first trips, we realized pretty fast that luckily, some of the places are guarded or protected or somehow where you don't want people to enter because they're protected from graffiti artists, uh, vandalists, junkies, and stuff, whoever move in. But sometimes these places are guarded. But we found a way to travel which allowed us to sneak in at night, <laughs> pass the guards, spend the night inside, and wake up the next morning with the beautiful light. And somebody was actually looking for us in the guardhouse outside. So we traveled with light equipment, a sleeping bag, a tent, some cooking equipment that allowed us to spend night after night inside these places, only to wake up in the morning in a place like this. This is the old power plant of Budapest, which was shut down more than 25 years ago and totally locked down the building. It took us a few nights. Uh, and we had no idea if it was there, because it was all based on rumors, as so many things we discover. We find them either on our way or they're based on rumors, because unfortunately yet, there are no Lonely Planet guide to abandoned places of the world. <laughs> so that allows us to sleep in here, and that, that is a glass ceiling, a self-hanging glass ceiling that's been there since 1927. We also got the experience, had the chance to experience places like a beautiful castle. But I must say that the interior of this place had kind of gone mad. We read, about, we read upon the story, and when the, the family who built this castle called Samisano in, in Italy, they invited uh, Moroccan, Moroccan uh, workers to come and do their work with tiles and crazy colors. That's a weird place waking up. Left abandoned for no reason. Still with the question of why. Sometimes we get the answers, but very often we don't. We kept discussing about this phenomenon. And we kept traveling and we kept discovering and said, what could be, how crazy can things get? What are the things that people leave behind out there? How far can we imagine this? One thing is a castle and another thing is a power plant. But how about a snake lab? So one morning, you're right, we found a snake lab. It's not that I hate snakes, but if you're inside a wooden building 
with a wooden floor that has been abandoned 15 years ago. It kind of gets mushy. <laughs> and when you have 1,000 jars of snakes in formaldehyde on shelves, as soon as you move inside, everything moves. <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> and sometimes things get a little weird, and sometimes the answers, they come to us once we're in the place. It's obvious this was a snake lab. We once went inside a beautiful house in, in Germany. Uh, and we couldn't figure out what kind of millionaire place was this. And we, we were pretty sure it was a doctor living there. And it was only until we entered, after half an hour on the first floor, we realized what kind of doctor he was. We never break in. We never remove anything. And we never stage anything. We take things for as they are. And I've spent a thousand Hours traveling, only coming to a place where we couldn't enter. Because we don't break a lock, we don't go. Only if the place allows us to. And mostly important, we never tell the location of these places. We come across a lot of valuable stuff, of course. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of collectors out there who would, and trust me, they have called, <laughs> they would gladly know where are we to find this place if we go. And it's a weird sensation because once you're in an abandoned building or an abandoned place, it kind of, it's kind of like you have two films going. The one thing is, of course, taking, note of, of, taking notice of what's there now. But another thing is also the movie that runs on your inner vision, what's not there. And being in an abandoned theme park like this one, this is a copy, of course, of Disney World in Japan, uh, it's a huge area, totally abandoned. Now it's been taken over by nature and thousands of deers inside. It was only us and it was dead quiet. Not a single screaming children, not the smell of popcorn, but just nature, beautiful taken over. And what an incredible place to stay for the day and to spend the night. <laughs> the project I'm aware of has raised not just for us a lot of questions, and it's hard for us to find the answers, but also since we started going public with the project, because in the beginning we didn't, but the last five years we've gone public with it and shared this with the world. And at some point, there was a priest who came up and asked, why do you think this is so fascinating? And I went on about the adventure, the traveling, the pictures, the adrenaline, and everything that, that got us going for this. And he said, you're wrong. Not for you guys doing this stuff, but why is this interesting for everybody else to look at and to share and to talk about and discuss and read about? And he gave us some insights, which we later turned into our own words, but I'm just being honest. It was the priest who was the smart guy, and he said, we are living an, our entire life in the Western world, pushing away three taboos in life. The taboos of loneliness. Nobody wants to be, feel lonely or be lonely. The taboo of decay. We're all decaying. And the biggest taboo of them all, death. We don't show anything with people. But between the lines, that was what he read, and that's why he gave us the credit for doing what we're doing. Last year, some rumors came to us about a crazy place in Russia. And we decided we're going to raise the bar a little bit because this looks pretty crazy. Inside Russia, former USSR, now Kazakhstan, in Kazakhstan, in the desert, Russia has rented an area called Baikonur, the Baikonur Cosmodrome. And that is where since 61, when they sent Gagarin as the first man in space, they're still launching space shuttles every year. We heard the rumor that inside a hangar was 
the biggest, the most comprehensive, the most expensive, and the most secret space program that was made during the Cold War. It has been left abandoned since 93. So we decided to gear up, mount some dollars in our underwear, and travel to this unknown wild destination, trespassing that all night, walking through the desert, spending days going in, and finally locating this place. And inside, we found this. This is the Buran. And it looks similar to the US shuttle system, like Discovery. And there's a reason for that, because everything is co has been copied from the US back in the days. And we had the chance to sit as cosmonauts in the cockpit of this magnificent piece. So I've come across a lot of crazy things in life, crazy abandoned places, and I'm still haunted by the many questions. And sometimes when I look at my pictures, I still don't get it, like this one. I shot this in a hospital in Russia. It's a bathtub, and there's a meat grinder, <laughs> and there's a thingy. And I, had n I, st I still don't have no idea <laughs> what's going on. Maybe they like meatloaf, <laughs> or maybe the patients, I don't know. Even though this thing has to do with the taboos of death, visiting those places are some of the things that makes us feel most alive. Thank you very much.